the big boys over at SpaceX are going to get pummeled by some storms overnight. Meanwhile, NASA got the Bennu asteroid sample result much better than scientists expected. How are all these interesting things happening? Let's go over all of these key events that took place in the last couple of days in today's episode of Great SpaceX. During the wait for the FAA to let Starship launch, this week SpaceX is anticipating to warm the hearts of space enthusiasts with another blazing launch utilizing one of its legendary rockets, the Falcon Heavy. This powerful Falcon Heavy rocket has reached the pad ahead of its planned launch on Tuesday, October 10th. According to the original plan, the rocket would launch NASA's Psyche spacecraft toward a bizarre metal asteroid also called Psyche, today, October 12th. Sadly, it seems that Mother Nature did not wish to cooperate. During a pre-launch press briefing on Wednesday, bleak predictions for the next morning's forecast left only a 20% chance of favorable weather conditions. As Wednesday night's storm blew in, the decision was made to forego Thursday's launch attempt to capitalize on the better weather predicted for launch windows on Friday and Saturday. Our Lena Moses, launch weather officer with the U.S. Space Force, was at Wednesday's press briefing and explained the growing concerns. One of the main watch items now has kind of shifted uh, from just the storms uh, in the area to uh, our liftoff winds. Behind this warm front, and especially with that area of low pressure coming towards us, we expect uh, winds to pick up very quickly out of the south and southwest. Could see 20 to 25 miles an hour, likely some stronger gusts uh, with that as well. Those conditions were expected to persist through Thursday's launch window, prompting mission teams Wednesday evening to make the decision to delay until Friday. For Moses explained during the briefing. So for our first backup window Friday morning, 50% chance for go conditions with our concerns still being associated with storms in the area where we have anvil clouds, some thick clouds, which is layered clouds, as well as cumulus clouds, which get associated with uh, storms. Now looking at Saturday morning on our third backup window, here is uh, still about the same probability there, our 50% chance of go, and fairly similar conditions here uh, where there may be some storms around, but we expect uh, most of uh, any storms to be after our morning launch windows. The decision to forego Thursday's window may also have to do with the characteristics of Psyche's launch vehicle. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy has limited launch recycle attempts, meaning the rocket can be fully fueled for launch up to two times before needing maintenance enough to delay launch more than a couple of days. Tim Dunn, NASA's senior launch director for the Launch Services Program, touched on some of the resource constraints during Wednesday's briefing. The limitations for uh, recycle attempts is uh, due to the vast quantity of densified locks that we use for each attempt with a Falcon Heavy configuration. Um, and then after that second attempt, should have we uh, done that, then we would be down about five days to replenish the locks in the ground sphere and get it into a densified state. So NASA is now aiming for Friday's 50% go window with Saturday's similar coin toss chance of favorable launch conditions as a backup. The new plan allows a higher probability of success should the first launch attempt score up closer to T-0 in the countdown. Psyche's launch window runs through October 25th. After it gets off the ground, the probe will head toward the asteroid Psyche, which lies in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Astronomers think the bizarre metallic body may be the exposed core of a protoplanet. The Psyche mission will help them take its measure. All right, we'll have to wait a little longer for this historic flight. Meanwhile, NASA can treat you with a, a treasure trove of extraterrestrial material. NASA gave the world its first look at the Bennu sample yesterday on the 11th of October during a live webcast event, which also provided a rundown of the first analyses performed on the off-Earth material. Those very early scientific returns are promising, showing that the rocks and dust contain water and a large amount of carbon, said NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, which suggests that asteroids may have delivered the building blocks of life to Earth. The OSIRIS-REx sample is the biggest carbon-rich asteroid sample ever delivered to Earth and will help scientists investigate the origins of life on our own planet for generations to come, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said in a statement 
even today. Almost everything we do at NASA seeks to answer questions about who we are and where we come from. Nelson added, NASA missions like OSIRIS-REx will improve our understanding of asteroids that could threaten Earth while giving us a glimpse into what lies beyond. The sample has made it back to Earth, but there is still so much science to come, science like we've never seen before. The sample collected from the four and a half billion year old near-Earth asteroid Bennu in October of 2020 by NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission arrived on Earth in a capsule on September 24th, dropping from the spacecraft and landing in the Utah desert. Since then, scientists have been hard at work studying the wealth of material, more than they expected, just inside the top of the canister to conduct an early analysis. The results of that analysis and the first look at the sample were shared during a live NASA broadcast from the agency's Johnson Space Center in Houston on Wednesday. It's the largest asteroid sample returned to Earth. In fact, there was so so much bonus material when the scientists opened the canister that the team has yet to even open the bulk sample. First and foremost, by studying Bennu, scientists are looking back to the primordial era when Earth began transitioning from an extremely hot world with a hellish surface environment into something more like a ball of mud. Poking these pebbles and rocks with sophisticated equipment here on Earth may allow Loretta and the other scientists to answer questions about how terrestrial planets like Earth and Mars formed, and possibly whether asteroids seeded Earth with the building blocks for life. In a preliminary analysis of some of the dust, Loretta said scientists hit the jackpot with a sample that is nearly 5% carbon by mass and has abundant water in the form of hydrated clay minerals. It is highly plausible that asteroids like this delivered the vast majority of the water now found in Earth's oceans, lakes, and rivers billions of years ago. By piecing together clues from the asteroid dust, both its water and organic molecules, the scientists believe they may better understand how Earth went from an uninhabited mud ball to the world teeming with life today. This thing's loaded with organics. I mean, again, just... You know, this is incredible material. Daniel Glavin, a co-investigator on the mission. This thing's loaded with organics. We'll be looking for these, again, biologically essential organic molecules. OSIRIS-REx, the team, we picked the right asteroid. And not only that, we brought back the right sample, right? This stuff is an astrobiologist's dream. Beyond exploring the origins of Earth and possibly life upon it, material from this mission will provide insights into other questions. For example, NASA and some companies are interested in harvesting resources from asteroids to fuel human exploration deeper into the solar system. A thorough investigation of Bennu will provide information about what resources exist in this type of carbon-rich asteroid and how difficult it will be to harvest and process them for fuel. NASA, of course, is also interested in planetary defense. Bennu, as one of the small subset of asteroids that have orbits outside the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, is of high interest because it might potentially intersect with Earth. According to scientists, there is a 1 in 2,700 chance that Bennu could strike Earth between now and September of 2182. Although Bennu is only about 1 20th the size of the large asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs nearly 70 million years ago, it is large enough to destroy multiple cities or cause a huge tsunami. Understanding the nature of Bennu will help scientists and engineers better understand how best to impact and change the orbit of threatening asteroids in the future. So even though the world is awash with bad news at this time, I hope that the story of an asteroid retrieval is a positive one. NASA has worked closely with space agencies in Japan and Canada on the mission and partnered with scientists in dozens of countries to study the material brought back. Such an effort unites humanity rather than dividing it. And that's all folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for SpaceX exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.